Hello students! In this video we'll discuss how to solve a dynamical system when the eigenvalues of the matrix A are complex numbers. So when the eigenvalues of A are complex, the complex roots occur in conjugate pairs. This implies that the eigenvalues and eigenvectors occur in conjugate pairs. Let's see an example of this. Let's solve the dynamical system x prime of t is 5, negative 2, 1, 3, x of t. To do this, we'll find the eigenvalues of the matrix A. We do this by computing the characteristic polynomial. The determinant of our matrix with lambda subtracted on the main diagonal. And we set this equal to zero. Computing this determinant, we see that I have lambda minus five times lambda minus three, and then the off diagonal. So I have a negative two times one with a negative sign, so that's a plus two equals zero. When I FOIL this out, I'll have a lambda squared, a minus eight lambda, a plus 15, and a plus two equals zero. And we see that we can write this as lambda squared minus 8 lambda plus 16 plus 1 equals 0, where this is now a perfect square. So this will be lambda minus 4 squared plus 1 equals 0, which tells me that my eigenvalues are 4 plus or minus i, since the square root of negative 1 is plus or minus i. Now, I will find the eigenvectors that correspond to each of these complex conjugate roots. So notice that we can see explicitly that I have a 4 plus i and a 4 minus i, so they do indeed occur in conjugate pairs. So let's look at the case when lambda is 4 plus i, and let's find the eigenvector for this. So to do this, I will need to solve the problem 5 minus 4 plus i, negative 2, 1 and then a 3 minus 4 plus i applied to v1, v2 equals 0, 0. And this will simplify to 1 minus i negative 2, 1 negative 1 minus i, v1, v2 is 0, 0. So if I write this as a system, I see that 1 minus i times v1 minus 2v2 has to be 0. The other equation that we'll get will be identical or dependent on the first one, so this is the only equation we need to satisfy. I can satisfy this equation by choosing v2 to be 1, and then v1, if v2 is 1, this will become 1 minus i, v1 equals 2. So v1 will be 2 over 1 minus i, which we can simplify by multiplying the top and the bottom by 1 plus i. And I'll get a 2 plus 2i over 1 minus i squared. So we see that v1 is a 2 plus 2i, and now 1 minus i squared is equal to 2, the 2's will cancel and I will see that the v1 I can choose will simply be 1 plus i. And this is the eigenvector corresponding, this corresponds to lambda equals 4 plus i. We will see by our conjugate root assumption, our theorem over here, that 1 minus i1 will be the eigenvector that corresponds to lambda equals 4 minus i. And now I can write down the solution of our problem. The solution of our problem x of t 
will be C1 e to the 4 plus i t in the direction of its eigenvector, 1 plus i1 plus c2 e to the second eigenvector, 4 minus i t in the direction of its eigenvector, 1 minus i1 and now I can plot a common factor of e to the 4t from both expressions and see that x of t will be e to the 4t times the quantity c1. And now I have e to the it, so I will apply Euler's formula. Euler's formula will say that e to the it is cosine of t plus i sine of t. And this will be in the direction of the eigenvector 1 plus i1. And then I'll have a c2 by Euler's formula again, cosine of t minus i sine of t. And this will be multiplied by its direction, 1 minus i and then 1. And therefore we have our solution. And the final step, now the final simplification, we'll leave our answer in complex form, but the final simplification will be to take this and to split into real and imaginary parts. So we see that when we have one complex root of a characteristic equation, I will also get the complex conjugate root, and I will also find that the eigenvectors will be complex conjugates of each other. Thank you very much.